I'm Chosen Architect, and this is All The Mods 9, and today we get into some more Pneumaticraft. But today we make one of the most OP pieces of armor that exists, and we also make the rest of the creative items from Pneumaticraft. Hopefully you guys are ready. Now I have been sort of on a creative item spree. Over the last few episodes, we have set out to gather all of the creative items that we can really get our hands on. And well, today is going to be a continuation of that. We are going to be going after the new Manicraft stuff here in all the mods nine, but it does require a bit of setup and prep in order to do this and to be able to actually achieve and get these creative items. Now, along with that, I'm also going to be going for one of the coolest looking pieces of gear, I think in the pack. And that is the new Manicraft suit. This thing is amazing looking and literally just going to replace the cosmetic suits of armor that I currently have. I have a problem. I know. Now, what exactly does it take to make the Pneumaticraft creative items? Well, there are two separate items right here that we have access to. One is unlimited heat control and one is unlimited pressure control. Um, now, the pressure control one is a little bit harder, I think, to get. Uh, but the, this one right here just requires a bit of iron. You're going to need iron. You need to do the same process that we've done before by getting this all the way up to 4.9 bar and then allowing it to craft, which happens instantaneously. But look here, it does cost all of these blocks uh, to be able to do this. So that is a lot of compressed iron. Um, and if you remember, you, to get compressed iron, we can either put it inside of our pneumatic craft chamber and compress it there, or we can blow up TNT, which is probably what we're gonna do next to, you can use blocks of this iron. So this one's relatively straightforward. Now the other one is not. So, if we take a look at the creative compressor here, we will see that this requires advanced pressure tubes, and these are important. And then we also have the uh, electrostatic compressor. Uh, this just requires more and more of these advanced tubes. Now, the way that we get these advanced tubes is through an assembly process. Now, I will, I will go ahead and say here that this process can be done very easy, and we can actually make all of our assembly machines really easy without the need for you to go through the tedious process that is making circuits, also called PCBs. Now to do this, you are going to have to roll yourself a pressure mechanic. This guy right here is just using a pressure charging station. So just a charger station inside of here. And there's a chance for it to roll finished PCBs and also micro missiles as we use this to complete the all the mod star. But these right here are the important things. And if you're wondering how I'm trading here, I'm holding down shift and then I'm hitting space bar to refill the emeralds. And then I'm hitting shift to send this into my inventory. You can see, so long as we have enough emeralds, we can do this for quite a while and we can get quite a few of these finished PCBs just like that. Now, if you really want to maximize the setup here, all you have to do is you have to threaten the villager with uh, a, a stone cutter by cutting some of these emeralds right next to it to put fear into this villager. And then you place the villager in here and then you can go ahead and click it with the emeralds and that should restock its trades whenever it is completed. You can see I just restocked its trades again and I'm able to trade with it over and over again. Yeah, pretty darn powerful. Now with all of our PCBs ethically sourced, we can go ahead and start to craft all of our different drilling components. Um, and I have a ton of these pneumatic cylinders just from looting alone. You find a ton of them in uh, in inventories, just all underground. Now, another thing we're gonna also need is an Amadrone tablet. And I'm gonna show you how to use this. Uh, we need the Amad uh, Amadrone tablet to be able to purchase the assembly programs uh, because these are just not something you can craft. You're gonna have to trade with the Amadrone gods. I honestly don't know where these guys come from, but uh, it is going to allow us to sort of trade just like a villager, but with the drone community. I honestly, I have no idea how that works. We really need some lore developed for this mod. Now to put some life inside of our tablet, we do need to charge it up. So I'm gonna put it in here and that's start, gonna start to put some charge into it. Now I still don't have any of this like on. I did remove all of the fuel technically from all of these. Um, so they are shut off, but I might end up putting some in here but this is going to take a little bit of time to slowly pressurize this, but we only need a few bar to be fair. Now with it pressurized just a little bit, we will shift right click onto an inventory. If we are doing inventory trading, if you're doing fluid trading, that's where things are a little bit different. You'd have to click a tank and also an inventory. 
Uh, but in our case, we're just going to be trading for these assemblies and we just need to put emeralds in here. And so if I grab a few emeralds, we can toss them in here and we can start to do some trades. So right off the bat, I can click this and we just need to right click to tell it what to send. Um, and I can do multiple trades, I do believe, on all of those. So I want one of each. And you can see, and then I just need to place the order. And with the order placed, it is going to come in here, uh, just somehow. And, and, and there it goes. The delivery drone is going to take my emeralds and dart off. What in the world? Uh, that guy went right through the wall. And then another one's going to come back and is going to drop off my products. Look at that. There we go. And this one's going to dart off as well. <laughs> Goodbye. Now it looks like there is all kinds of different trades in here. There's a hammer banner pattern. There's like all kinds of weird stuff that's all in here, like emeralds for books and, and all kinds of weird components. Even honey treats technically are in here, which is kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, outside of that, really not that crazy. I guess you could farm emeralds this way. It would just take a lot of time. So now with our assemblies, we should have everything we need to set up our assembly setup. Um, and we just need to give it some pressure. Now, when setting up the assembly, I'm pretty sure the orientation isn't that important. Um, all you have to do is really keep in mind the assembly platforms in the middle. And if we're going to be eventually be using the drill and laser setup, we're probably going to want our assembly drill and our assembly laser in here. Now, I'm not sure that it will work like this, where the, the they're kind of offset. Um, I do believe these actually have to be connected to the assembly platform. So if we set up our laser, for example, here and our drill right here, then we should be okay um, as far as this goes. Now, I'd like to kind of set this up in a cross pattern. So we'll set up our import, which is going to send items onto the platform from an inventory, by the way. Um, and then we'll have our export on the other side that is gonna send it back out the completed pro uh, process into an inventory. And then we'll have our assembly controller, which is what we actually connect our pressure to. So there we go, we now have our standby, and this is where we can put our upgrades and we'll also put our programs in, for example. Now, just for looks, I think I'm gonna use these reinforced chests for the input and output, just to kind of keep everything looking the same over here. But these are just a little bit larger chests and there is a diamond version as well. They also won't go boom if, well, we make a mistake with pressure and blow everything up over here. And we also need to get this hooked up to some pressure. So to do that, that connects into our assembly control. And now we should start to see this pressurizing up to pressure. Now these pipes are quite nice as they are going to allow us to send in more pressure. There's two different ways that we can make these advanced pipes. And that is with our uh, different programs. So we have our laser program here, which does require pressure chamber valves. Um, and this one just uses the laser assembly or we can use the laser drill combo and then just use compressed iron. And I think this is going to be the easiest as earlier. I thought I was going to need to explode iron and I had totally forgot that I actually have essence set aside for all of this. So we have plenty of blocks worth of material here. So to get this started, we just need to put in the correct program. For example, the assembly drill goes here and there's nothing we really set. Everything here should be completed. And then as soon as we put this in the import, it should automatically know that we have done this successfully and it automatically knows what this recipe is gonna be about. It's gonna pull it out nice and slow and send it here. Now you can put speed upgrades in here to speed this process up. But keep in mind, if you do put speed upgrades in here, you're gonna definitely notice a significant loss in pressure over time uh, if you do that. I mean, we might end up doing that here just a moment, but for the process right now, with it nice and slow, we can see this happening. I was gonna hit it with the drill first, which is, I mean, this is kind of cool seeing this. And these textures have really gotten nice over the years. This used to be, let's say a, a very interesting looking process. And look at that, it changed it into the pressurized uh, chamber valve that we just seen earlier. And then the laser is going to hit it here. So no need, it automatically like cr does the craft operation for you. I, get, I wonder if it would be faster to just craft the valves instead of doing this way. I don't know. This this doesn't seem all that bad and all that time consuming, especially whenever we uh, we add some upgrades in here. For example, the speeds, this will already make it go a bit faster. And then this was this is going to put the uh, the stuff in the output chest. I really love this thing. I don't know. It's just, I think it's kind of cool. Look, look at it. It just picks it up and then sends it over. This is almost as good as the, uh, the create 
sort of mechanical arms. I really do like these. And well, with that, we now have ourselves eight advanced pressurized tubes. That's only eight of them though, um, because we're gonna need quite a bit more. Now, something interesting that we can do, and I have used it, and that is this little gadget right here, this pressurized tube. Now, the cool part about the pressurized tube is I can now replace all of these pipes back here. I can replace them and I can put a speed upgrades in there. Uh, and this pressurized tube is going to limit this to only like 4.9 bar pressure going out from the advanced tubes, which can hold 20 bar. So this is definitely worth setting up and make sure you're making sure you have, because I do want to get this turned back on and I want this to start pressurizing this tube. Now, perfect. This is uh, running at like eight speed upgrades, which seems to be running really fast now. And I can start to use these tubes for all of these other operations over here. Like we can start to feed this back in. There we go. And we can also upgrade our air compressors to advanced versions. Now I wonder if I could just get by with one advanced air compressor, because this is able to pressurize up to the, the bar pressure, the 20. Um, this also does generate heat, so I'm gonna show a way to actually handle the heat here in a moment. Um, but we should be able to feed this and uh, let's give it also some speed upgrades. And we'll be able to see how effective this is, but it is going to go higher. Okay, so notice by the way, it did already blow that valve, <laughs> which is not good. Oh man, we almost risked blowing up our entire setup here. Now to help keep the heat down on the machine uh, and to reduce inefficiencies, we can actually use a vortex tube. However, this is also inefficient in itself. Um, and we are going to need a heat sink and a heat sink on the side. This is, I know, going to be way more than what's actually needed. Uh, but we can go ahead and put this here and it would probably be best to put the uh, limiter on here, but I am going to just hook it right in. Um, and then that's going to hopefully keep the machine cool whenever we have speed upgrades in here. And then I do need to reseat this with a new upgrade. I'm, I'm still, I still don't know why that one exploded. So I think I solved my sort of pressure sol uh, pressure issue by making sure that the advanced pressurized tube was the one that had that uh, that module on it. So put new Metacraft. And if we take a look, I think it's the tube module, right? Tube. Tube module, this right here, regulator tube module. This is the thing that you need to make sure, I think the input is the large size. Um, and that's gonna regulate it down to 4.9 bar. This is where things get a little complicated. And then the 4.9 should be on this tube right here, which in reality, it'd probably be best if we just had our generator like one block over here. And then we had our tube module on the advanced and that leads right into this, keeping this at exactly 4.9 bar, which uh, would be better. But here, here shortly, we'll be able to have an infinite amount of these. So I'm not super worried there, but I do need to make sure and start producing quite a bit more of these tubes. So I went ahead and disconnected our tube so we can get our pressure to that maximum just like we had did before. So this is now regulating to 9.1 here. This tube is at like 9.2. I could probably take my upgrades out of here and I just need to start getting ready uh, to craft this creative compressor. So it requires four stacks of the tubes. So let's go ahead and get one, two, three, four. There's four stacks. And then we just need one of each which I guess I could probably just pull this all into my inventory, right? There we go. Actually, that's the easiest way to do this. Um, so we'll make sure that that is fully at 64. And then we just need a star. So we'll just go over here and grab ourselves a star. Oh boy, we're about to make our first Pneumaticraft creative item. Oh man, this is actually kind of, kind of nice. Um, and I think this is still good. 9.3. This is 9.4. We are very close to it being like, I, I would say too much pressure. It does get a little bit sketchy when we start to get this too close to that five mark. The thing, as soon as it goes over just a little bit, it becomes too much. Now on this, I did go ahead and put speed upgrades. As you guys let me know in the last new Minecraft video, I did not realize that I could put speed upgrades in here. Um, and the speed upgrades though, they do degrade the pressure. So notice the pressure, the pressure went down a lot. So the more speed upgrades you have in here, the lower that pressure is going to drop each time it does send the items in, which is honestly unfortunate. We should have probably just used the time in the bottle as it holds pressure a lot better. I think it's about ready to craft. We just need one more bar of pressure and we are right there. There is the 4.9 and we just want to hope that this all crafts. Oh, I did forget the star, didn't I? 
Okay, so last thing that goes in is the star. I'm taking these upgrades out. And I'm just going to put the star in and hope that it doesn't actually drop the pressure too much. And there it goes. <laughs> nice. Uh, and perfect. And so there we go. We now have that crafted. I now need to pull the upgrades out of here. This is going to explode. Um, and that is our creative pneumaticraft item. Um, I keep searching creative. Pneumaticraft. Where is it at? Right here. Creative compressor. There we go. We've now crafted another create item. Now, there is still another, not create item, another pneumaticraft creative item. But there we go. We now have it crafted up. And there's only one more left to go. And that is going to be the heat block. Now, to create this, I do want to break these for right now. And I want to try and use this. So I have it set to 4.9 bar. And I'm wondering if I just go ahead and place this on. And it's set to that bar number. I got to be very careful with this. 4.9. That should just maintain 4.9 immediately here. Oh, and that is so much easier to handle. We have no need for this anymore. We now have creative amounts. Oh, it's beautiful. It is so beautiful here. Look at this. It just maintains and holds 4.9 bar. Oh, that's gorgeous. So now at this point, the production of more of these is even easier. Now, this is going to be fantastic. I should be able to put the speed upgrades back in. Four of them were definitely enough. And I'll just place all of the items for this creative set in. And the pressure should drop, but it should go right back up and hold and maintain at 4.9. That is beautiful. Oh, so nice. This, I, I didn't realize how powerful this creative compressor was. This saves so much headache. Oh, it's, it's just fantastic. And there it is. And then it should boop. There it is. There's the 4.9. Does it need to go slightly higher than 4.9? I'm pretty sure that was exactly the number we need. Let's bring it up to 4.9. There it is. <laughs> it was exactly 5 bar. I guess we could maintain it 5 bar, but it feels really dangerous to do that. Um, I, do, I don't know. I guess we could hold it at, at exactly 5. But it did craft it. So, there we go. Now we have the creative compressed iron block, which is a heat source, by the way. So we could determine how hot or how cold this block can get as Pneumaticraft um, has a heat system also. Now, this right here is kind of a good example of this creative compressed block right here. Um, we can now set the temperature to whatever we want. For example, this is 21 degrees. We can drop this down to negative 200, and you'll see that the temperature on this machine is going to plummet all the way down to that temperature. And then this will actually reflect the temperature that it is currently set to. So if we set it to, for example, 100 and, or 220 degrees Celsius, this thing is going to ramp up and get really hot and probably melt everything in the vicinity. So now for the fun part, actually crafting another one of these creative machines. So I'm going to craft another creative compressor to use elsewhere for 20 bar. And so let's go ahead and send all of the necessary ingredients in for this one. And this is going to get all placed in. And I might have to kind of knock it just a little bit because we can't go in any smaller increments than what we currently have here. Um, like if I if I just have to bump this up to go up one more until it crafts. I think I think I have all of the ingredients in here. Nope, I was just missing a compressor. <laughs> so as soon as I put the compressor in here, then we should be able to boop it to get it to craft just like that. Um, and then later on, we'll be able to definitely make sure that this sustains. Um, I just want to make sure that I have another creative compressor laying around just in case I accidentally set this to five bar and it just blows up. That would not be that would not be good. So I want to make sure I have one uh, so I don't have to go through the whole process again. Now, how am I going to use this creative compressor? Well, there's a lot of tools in this mod and I want to show off all of these amazing tools because Pneumaticraft, while seemingly complicated, has some of the best tools I have ever used and played with. And so the fun begins. I have crafted up a couple of those items, one being the pneumatic jackhammer, which is incredibly cool, and then also the entirety of the pneumatic armor set. So the base armor set is, of course, compressed iron, and you probably come across this at some point, but you can actually upgrade that with some air canisters, 
and a finished PCB, and you can get yourself a pneumatic suit. This has fully customizable options, uh, and it is quite insane. If I go ahead and I just equip this, right now we don't see anything, but if we give ourselves some pressure to this gear, then we'll actually start to see some things. And speaking of getting pressure to our gear, we can do this via a charger. That is one way we can do it, but there's also another way, the aerial interface. And I think I have everything needed in order to actually make this thing. Um, and this should allow us to send pressure to ourself, like wirelessly. Um, it's pretty powerful. Now, I don't know where to put this just yet. Uh, for right now, I think I'm going to put it right here just to sort of test out. Um, just in case it explodes, because I don't want to overpressurize it. It should hold 20 bar. But by default, you can see there's a slot for power. Uh, there's a slot for pressure and all kinds of different information that we have here. So one thing we can definitely give it is pressure. So let's see how much bar we can actually give this. Let's do 5, 10. Let's just say consistent 10 bar, which is where it's currently at. Actually, let's bring it up just a little bit. And we'll do 5 more. Let's say 15 bar consistent. And so we should have 15 bar consistently going in here, but it's uh, not upgrading our gear, it doesn't look like. But we should be able to here in a minute. So at this point, I have decided to go ahead and move this sort of aerial interface over here, and I think this is going to be a perfect place for it. Let's go ahead and place it right here, for example. And then I'm gonna use my creative power over here, and I'm gonna show you now how to charge your pneumatic craft armor or tools that are in your inventory from the aerial interface. Now, you can also feed yourself from this. You can control your uh, experience flowing in and out of you from this. It's honestly got a lot of uses and you could have more than one of them, uh, but you do need to make sure it is maintained and pressurized. So let's go ahead and actually do that. I'm gonna place this right on this, just like so. And then we'll set this to like the 15 bar that we had it set to earlier, which is more than enough to make sure it is powered. And you can also charge yourself from this by feeling, uh, you know, putting uh, RF in this. But what I want to do is I actually want to send the, uh, the, the, the pressure from this creative compressor into my inventory and charge my stuff. So to be able to do that, we're probably going to need two different locations here uh, because I want to be able to also charge my jackhammer. And I think I have the ability to do that. We're going to need a charging module and some tubes. So let's go ahead and break our interface for right now. And let's take a tube just like this. And then we need on the bottom of this, we need to place this charging module. And you'll see that it is now pointing down like that. And we need that to point down into our interface here. So it is all set up, we're ready to go. We need to make sure that on our side configuration that the top slot is set to our armor slots. Now you can set this to your offhand, main hand, all of that fun stuff um, if you really want to. Um, so yes, that should all work, even your main inventory. But for right now, we need this to be set to our armor slots. So whenever I put my armor in here, this should, which has a really cool animation by the way, this should now all be charging from this and maintaining a full charge on this gear. And this gear can get pretty powerful. Let me kind of show you. So. I'll just take this off, and if we take a dabble in here, we can put this inside of a charging station to access its upgrades. Now, its upgrades are vast. There are tons of things that we can put in here. Some of the most notable things that we can put in here are uh, volume upgrades and armor upgrades. These are some of the most important because the volume upgrades will, well, allow us to not run out of charge, which I guess in this case, because we're charging yourself, is maybe not a big deal but the armor upgrades are 100% a big deal because you were pretty squishy in this gear without actually having armor upgrades in here. Now, if you click this, you can see that this is your armor value. Uh, you can put a maximum of four of these upgrades inside of your suit at any given time. Uh, a, a one piece, by the way. But there are more modules to this than meets the eye. This has the ability to let you see chests through walls. Oh, and another thing I want to do is I also want to go on the bottom of this here and I actually want to place this tube charge module uh, on the bottom of the machine. Uh, so we'll have two of those on this interface and that way we can have one that is on the top and the bottom is set to our inventory. So our inventory should hopefully charge our hammer as well. 
So back to my helmet. As far as upgrades go, I have my max armor. I have some ender visor here. I have an entity tracker, which is really cool. A block tracker. I have some range upgrades that will increase the range on those effects. Scuba upgrade for underwater activities coordinate tracker and then we have the radiation shielding upgrade and then we have another slot for some other things there are some things for example ender vision that i really don't need um, that we could just for example use what we currently have um, which would leave up some space for for example a space upgrade because there is an add-on that'll that adds a space upgrade the radiation shielding i do believe should protect us i think um, it doesn't show in here, uh, right here. Yeah, it, it should protect us from the mechanism stuff so long as it's on all of our pieces of gear. So that's honestly kind of cool in itself. Uh, now, this is the powerful one, right? So the charging upgrade, this should actually allow our, for example, hammer, I think, to charge off of our chest piece whenever our chest piece is in our inventory. Um, so that charging upgrade should hopefully do that. I'm pretty sure there is the ability to toggle that on in our settings. So my chest piece as of right now just has a couple of upgrades. We have our armor upgrade, we have our charge upgrade, radiation, and then a gilded one, which well works as if we're wearing a piece of gold armor. Now for the leggings, I'm going to put in some upgrades we can put in, for example, because we're hooked up to some creative stuff, we can go ahead and put the 10 speed upgrades in here and that's going to make us run faster. And then we have our radiation upgrades in there as well. And then on the boots, it's very simple radiation and then our flipper upgrades which I believe let us swim a little bit faster in the water. Um, and these this gear hasn't even been enchanted yet. And yes, that charging upgrade does appear to be feeding our jackhammer, which is exactly what I wanted it to do, which probably means that I didn't actually need this setup down here. And also, my goodness, the speed on these pants are a little overwhelming. So let's go ahead and solve that problem uh, because this is just way too uncontrollable. Uh, and we need to get into the settings of this armor. Now, to access the settings of this gear, I think the default hotkey is U. So, here we go. We now have a ton of configuration options for all of this gear, which is just ridiculous. Now, underneath the hotkeys, this is where we can actually uh, assign uh, the hotkeys, for example, to open the settings menu, I believe. So, yes, as you can see right here. Um, and then we have color options. This allows us to fully customize the colors of our gear, you can see just like this. Um, and we can we can reset, we can copy settings from a section and apply it to another. For example, we wanna change the color of our eyes to like some sort of purple color. There we go, we can do that very nicely. Look at this, I mean, I can, I can play with this for days. <laughs> just kind of getting the right sort of color. Like let's get, let's get an orange color, look at that. So all we have to do is hit save. And that is now saved. And if you have it enchanted, you can disable the enchantment glint from this section right here, which I absolutely love because sometimes I just don't like the enchantment glint. But over here is where we turn on and off all of our stuff and control it. For example, there's our step assist. It's enabled. Fall protection's enabled. Run speed. This is where we can control that speed that I was talking about that was really, really fast. Then we have our auto charge, which is enabled. We can turn on our scuba set which will allow us to breathe underwater then we have an entity tracker and we can actually type in the actual entity we want to see that's so powerful the ender visor which will give us night vision which we don't necessarily need coordinates tracker lets us kind of see where we are currently at which i kind of want to see where this is located all of this information by the way we can move around and then we have our block tracker which is in my opinion one of the most op parts of this gear and kind of worth just putting on just for this feature alone where we can spot, for example, mob spawners, we can spot um, hackable things like inventories. We can access inventories, which is really powerful. And if I just turn this on and enable the block tracker, we will be able to see this stuff in action. So um, I can now see everything that is considered an inventory and it is analyzing all of those things just like that. And so it has now analyzed, and whenever I look at these things, you will see that it will actually show what that inventory is. And if it's a chest, it'll even show the items that are inside of that chest. Now notice on the right, we have our like little stat screens. Um, we can actually move all of those around. And unfortunately it doesn't like show everything that's on my screen while we're doing it. So you kind of have to kind of play around with this. For example, if I move my stat panel, I can't see like my inventory up here. Um, so I have to kind of move this around until I think that it's maybe in a good, good position, for example, right there. And then I back out 
And then we can see, okay, maybe it needs to go up a little bit. So I go back into the settings and so on and so forth. And then for each of these, there's actually a stat panel that can be moved as well. So you can see, you can kind of get this kind of put in the way that you want. There's even a message up here that will display and all of those things, just like you see right now, are pretty much set and ready to go. Now you can also assign hotkeys to toggle any of these things on and off. Uh, but for right now, I have this uh, sort, I, I, I just like to kind of just open this menu and toggle them on from here. So now that's cool and all, but let's actually put this to the test, for example. Let's go to the entity tracker. And I don't know how this is gonna work, but let's say Blaze. Um, I don't know if this is going to filter by whatever I put in here exactly, but, oh, it does look like it works. So this right here is sort of pinging the existence of Blazes, um, which is pretty darn cool. Like it's not showing up for anything else. And so you can just put the entity's name in and we'll now see it. Oh, that is kind of ridiculous. Now this gear is fantastic, and I think next episode we should talk about the elephant in the room, which is this drill, which is insanely powerful, but requires some interesting steps in order to actually make it fully functional. But once we get there, oh, this drill, this jackhammer is amazing, and is honestly, in my opinion, like a fantastic mining tool. I know, we already have some of the best mining tools, I know. This one is really cool, just trust me. So if you enjoyed today's episode and you enjoyed learning something new, be sure to click that subscribe button if you haven't already. And also give this video guys a huge thumbs up. We have now effectively crafted all of the creative items that are in the creative tab, but there is still more left to do. I am not done with this pack just yet. And like I said before, I would love to maybe dabble a little bit in that Greg stuff, but there is still some more preparations to be done before then. So. Guys, if you did enjoy, like I said, click that subscribe button, and it's now time to thank the amazing supporter of today's episode. And that amazing thanks, by the way, is going to go out to Kulo Joe. Thank you so much for your amazing support, by the way, over on the Discord, becoming a Discord Premium member, and supporting me in one of the best ways possible. Thank you so much for going above and beyond, and I thank you very, very much. Also, I do thank all of you guys for watching. Thank you for watching all the way up to this episode. That's honestly an insane accomplishment to have gotten this far through this series. It is quite long at this point, but I'm still having a blast. And it's because of you guys commenting in the comment section. So be sure to let me know what has been your favorite part about this mod in Pneumaticraft. Let me know down in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye.